Do you ever feel like no matter what you do, you just can't make enough money to stop living from paycheck to paycheck? To start saving on your path to achieving financial freedom or even to retire early so that you can spend time with family? We were all told to go to school, get an education, work hard, and as such, we'll achieve financial success. Because you know what? Successful people, they work hard. But you have been working hard, right? You have also tried different businesses and hustles and they all fail. You are trying to get promoted at work, but it's just not happening for a myriad of reasons. And quite frankly, if you work any harder, you may not live long enough to spend the money that you're hoping to make while working. So what really is the answer, my rock stars? The thing is, successful people, they don't just work hard, they work smart and they work in a different way. And that's why I'm here today. Because what I'm gonna share with you today are four success secrets that you need to know to be wealthy and to stop failing. This time around, my rock stars, Failure will not be an option. Let me know in the comments if you agree. Just hashtag for me down there. Failure is not an option. I've seen a lot of change, been through a lot of pain. Some things are not the same as they were a year ago. Welcome back to the channel, my YouTube family, my rock stars. It's so great to have you back for another video. And today I'm very excited because we're sharing secrets, which means we're oversharing. And you guys know by now that I love to share, but I also love to overshare. What I'm gonna share with you today is very different from what many people have shared as it pertains to the secrets of success. And that's primarily because a lot of people who share secrets to success they are diplomatic they want to share what sounds good or what sounds uplifting and what sounds inspiring I have to blur the lines I'm gonna be honest with you if you don't do certain things although they're ethical but they're definitely blurring the line you will not be successful and that's why only 2% of the world are considered financially successful successful because most are unwilling to blur those lines and to push the envelope that aggressively in order to assure success. So that said, you may not want to do some of the things I'm going to talk about today. You may think, Odetta, but that's infringing on my character, my reputation, who I am as a person. It's really your decision at the end of the day. I'll never ask you to do anything illegal, but what I have to say is that a lot of people who achieve success it's because they're willing to take chances and sometimes those chances are pretty risky so brace yourself for what I'm about to share and if you find that it's too much for you and you are not willing to take these steps feel free to click off and to watch another one of my videos or watch something else on YouTube for that matter but if you want the secrets I'm gonna share them and I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. I'm not gonna polish it up nicely so it sounds good because to me, that's hypocrisy. Because when I was doing these things, I couldn't sugarcoat my approach or polish up my approach. I had to get down and dirty to achieve the success that I was able to. So here goes. Class is now in session. The first secret of success that I'm gonna share that's gonna stop you from failing is gonna require you to take a completely different approach to achieving your financial goals. And it is to stop waiting for permission or to stop asking for permission. Yep, you see what I'm talking about? It cross, guys. But it's the secret that's driving to success. 
So hear me out. Now there's a gentleman called John Leal, and he's known to be one of those people in history that prevented diseases. And you know how he did this? He added chlorine to water. Now all of us today drink water with chlorine. Quite frankly, if the water doesn't have chlorine in it, we think it's a risk because it's likely gonna get us sick. That's exactly what was happening in 1898 when people were drinking water that wasn't treated. The technology to treat water just didn't exist and it resulted in a significantly high mortality rate because people would drink the water back then, they would get infected and they would die. <coughs> Now, as I'm sure most of you know, chlorine in its pure form is considered to be a lethal poison. It was the same back then. So how do you put what's defined as a lethal poison in water that people are gonna drink? You're starting to see the issues around that? So obviously, when the discussion was had to put chlorine into drinking water, all people heard was you are gonna try to kill us slowly by poisoning our drinking water. So it wasn't catching on for obvious reasons. But you know what? John Leal, he knew he was right. He knew he was onto something and he was not getting the necessary approvals to put chlorine into drinking water. But guess what? He stopped asking for permission and he did it anyway. With what felt like a secret mission and of course without the permission of government authorities and of course not telling the public what he was about to do, Lil decided to add chlorine to the Jersey City reservoirs. And with the help of an engineer called George Fuller, Lil built and installed what we would today refer to as a chlorine plant at the Boonton Reserve outside of Jersey City. Now, obviously, this was a huge risk that he was taking, considering what scientists had proven that chlorine will do if ingested in the body. But when he had presented it to the government and they took it to court, the court gave him some ridiculous timelines and they asked for all kind of tests and he knew that with the high death rate, he just didn't have the time to facilitate facilitate that. So he decided to not ask for permission. But you know what my rock stars? It worked. And of course, it got him dragged into court in front of a judge, which is exactly what happens when you do something that sounds like it's gonna kill an entire city population. But he wasn't charged, and eventually he was allowed to implement his chlorine system across all of the United States. And just to give you some perspective, here were the results of a man who didn't ask for permission. They found that clean drinking water led to 43% reduction in total mortality rate in the average American city. And beyond that, chlorine and filtration systems reduced infant mortality rates by 74% and child mortality rate by the same percentage. Isn't that incredible? For someone who implemented something that everybody was against, but again, he didn't ask for permission. Now, my rock stars, I'm not asking you to break the law, but allow me to bring this point home to you from another perspective. Now, recently I had a conversation with someone who shared with me that they had found this product on the market overseas and wanted to introduce it in the country that they were living in. Now, they went to the government or the authorities and say, I have this product. It's it's in the healthcare industry. I know it's gonna do well and I'd like to distribute it locally. What do I need to do? The government provided a long list of things to include registering a company, doing due diligence with the organization or the company that's producing the products and a ton of other things. The person went and they did it in stages and every time they would come back to the government, the government would give them another list of things to do. 
Anyway, it got to the point where finally the government of that country said to them, listen, you don't have authorization to distribute this product because you don't have a medical license. Now, don't you think they knew this from day one before costing this person that much money and putting them through so much turmoil? It was really a facade. And you know what ended up happening? The person left the project alone and a few months later, that government was selling that product and distributing the exact same product to the public. Going back to the point I'm trying to make about the people that are successful, sometimes you cannot ask for permission because people will steal your ideas, which is what happened in this case, or people will stop you from doing something that you're certain about that will save lives. Now, don't get me wrong. There's a thin line there because what you are looking to introduce may be actually detrimental and may not be as successful. But take the general concept that I'm sharing and now apply it to your life. Are you doing things in your life that you're waiting for people to be in agreement with? for people to support, for people to say, yes, it's a great idea, or for people to buy into it. If you are relying on people's permission to execute, 90% of the time, they're holding you back and it's preventing you from achieving your financial and overall goals. The thing is, my rock stars, we were trained to wait for permission or to ask for permission. It's actually a way of controlling us. It happens in the workplace where you're going to get a warning letter or possibly terminated if you do something that's somewhat outside of your immediate scope that may be in the company's best interest, but they don't think you're supposed to do it. In life, if you step outside and do something differently, there are rules and laws to stop you from doing it. Frankly speaking, I don't know how you see it, but I see it as a means of controlling me and I don't like to be controlled. And I'm not saying that I'm radical, but what I will say is that learning very early that I shouldn't ask for permission if I believe in my core that what I'm doing is right and it's going to help people, it's had a significant positive impact on how successful I've become in life. Another recent example is the Rockstar grant that I announced. I announced it and somebody reached out to me to say, oh, you know, there are tax implications related to this grant. You need to create a proper nonprofit. I said, hell no, you're not going to use a nonprofit to tell me how to spend my hard earned money. So I'm going to incur the tax penalties associated with launching a grant and giving it to my subscriber family and doing it my way. It's a good thing I know about tax free havens and how to minimize your tax implications. Otherwise, with a good tax attorney. But you get the gist, right, my rock stars? Rules and laws and policies are set to control us. And if we stick to operating within the confines of those policies and never step out and blur the lines, sometimes we'll end up in a situation where no matter what we're doing, no matter how hard we're trying, we're not going to be successful. Again, I'm not suggesting that anybody breaks the law. I'm just saying that sometimes you have to take chances and that is actually a character trait of people who are successful. They're more inclined to take risks than those who are not. So that said, you want to start a business, get it done. Stop waiting on your friends and your family or anybody that you respect to endorse it. If you feel it's the right thing to do and you have explored your pros and cons, get moving. Stop waiting for permission and stop asking for permission when you don't have to do so on this path to achieving financial freedom. Now let's move into the second secret to success that most people won't tell you on your path to achieving financial freedom. And it is when things get difficult, don't quit get creative. Now, extremely successful people make the impossible 
possible. And they do it by being resourceful and creative. The thing is, what you'll find from a lot of research done as it pertains to people and how they approach the pursuits of their goals is that most people don't typically do what is best for them. They actually do what is easy. They take the lazy approach. However, successful people, on the other hand, will struggle to find a better way to do things to begin with. They're not interested in the lazy approach they're interested in the best way to do it. That said, they still don't get caught up with perfection over progress. They're finding a happy medium that will work and allow them to quickly but efficiently and creatively achieve their goals. Let me give you an example, my rock stars. So as I worked in outsourcing and I was launching the last company that I work for in Jamaica, the model that we were launching in was on a university campus and in this model the plan was to have the students work part-time as employees so that they could earn money to offset their education cost and it was a win-win for not just the organization but also the students and the clients because the level of employees who would be servicing their clients would be at a much higher level than what we would typically hire. Now there was some amount of reservations from students and a lack of interest as well and we were struggling to be able to staff effectively 24-hour shifts in some instances with students who were expected to work only 16 hours per week between making sure school remains a priority for them as well as exam timelines and when they didn't have the time to commit it was creating logistic issues from a workforce management perspective now the immediate thought from many in leadership was to abort the model but this again is where successful people are different they don't quit they get creative and i figured because so many students were benefiting from this model there's a lot of testimonials from students who said they would not have been able to afford to go to that university if this opportunity didn't exist and some of them even made enough to not just help them through school but to also help with their family so the benefits were too great for me to call it quits so you know what I had a very capable team we sat down we brainstormed and we came up with a solution that would work for all we figured that if we targeted a good mix of full-time students who could only give us 12 to 16 hours per week and a large group of part-time students who could work anywhere from 20 to 40 hours per week and then adding an amount of full-time people so that when these folks are doing exams or they have things that are more important as it pertains to their education, this group of employees who are not students would be able to balance that out. And we made the employee population very diverse as it pertains to some work in 12 to 16 hours, some work in 20 to 40 hours, and some that only worked a 40 hour work week. And we developed technology that allowed students to plug in their timetable or to upload their timetable in our tool. And then the tool would schedule them based on their availability and it would balance that out with those who were able to work more. It took time, it took effort, it took some amount of ingenuity, but you know what? With a desire to not quit and to find a solution that was creative and that worked, we persevered. And you know what? If you hear some of those testimonials, you'd be completely blown away as to how this model not only provided opportunities for students to pursue their education, but to help family members and to give them valuable work experience that they could use as they moved into their career or their profession of choice. Now let's bring it back home. As you are starting some of these businesses that I'm suggesting, or you are pursuing certain side hustles, or even in your nine to five job, things are gonna get difficult. Your products may not sell as you anticipated, especially in the time frame that you are projecting. Don't quit, my rock stars. Get creative. 
Can you do creative advertising? Sign up for affiliate platforms where you can put your products on those platforms like a gopher and have an army of people referring your products to their friends, families, and even complete strangers because they will earn a commission from doing so so that your marketing expenses are less. Drop your prices, offer discounts if you need to, to build up momentum until you're at a place where your product starts selling itself. Being different or being creative, it's not easy. Quite frankly, if it were easy, the wealthy people in the world wouldn't be just 2%. It would be more like 50%. But as we love to say in Jamaica, if you want good, you know a fair run. If you want to achieve your goals, you're gonna have to make the sacrifices. You're gonna have to differentiate yourself. You're gonna have to be creative and you're gonna have to work smart and not just hard. Now, let me share another story of creativity to bring this point home. And this one, I've heard that it's not real, but it sounds pretty real to me. So that's still up for debate. But there was an issue in space some years ago based on this story, where NASA was sending astronauts into space to do research. And the problem was, as they tried to write with a pen, they realized that a pen will not work at zero gravity. So America, it is alleged that they invested over $12 million to create a pen that could write at zero degree gravity, that could write in freezing temperatures, basically any condition, this pen would still be able to work because the ink would flow to the tip. The Russians had the same exact problem where their astronauts were not able to write in space and instead they used a pencil. You see where the creativity comes in? Now I'm gonna give you an example. That is from an illegal industry or organization, but a very creative one that has, despite it being illegal, has had a lot of success over the years and it's drug dealing. So take from this what I'm sharing and don't read too much into it, okay? The Colombian authorities had finally nailed Pablo Escobar and had him behind bars. And the judge that they had for that case would not take a bribe regardless of how much money Escobar was willing to pay. So what did Escobar do? I know you're probably thinking that he killed the judge, but no, he didn't kill the judge. Pablo Escobar got creative. He decided to hire the brother of the judge that was about to try his case as his attorney, his lawyer. Yes, which meant that automatically the judge would have to recuse himself from the case. And the replacement judge, obviously took the bribe. So Escobar got creative and got exactly what he wanted. You see, the thing is my rock stars, when we come up on challenges, our natural inclination is to quit. Or when we hear no, the natural action that follows is to stop. Or you know what we do? We double down on exactly what didn't work the first time or what hasn't been working, which is obviously the wrong approach. The difference is my rock stars is that successful people, we wheel and come again. We try a different method. We try a different approach. We don't beat down and keep trying the same thing that we have tried that didn't work. We get creative. And as such, the probability of us achieving success is significantly greater. Now the third success secret that will help you to achieve your financial goals is to aspire to make progress and not to be perfect. In other words, don't try to be great, be consistently good. As an example, every single person I come across that has a YouTube channel, they want it to be successful. They want 1 million subscribers and they want to achieve 500,000 views every single day on average. But regardless of their desire to achieve that outcome, they're incapable of starting that YouTube channel. They get caught up with being the best, the channel being perfect, and it results in procrastination. 
The same thing is going to apply to any of your other side hustles or your business. You want to make sure you have the perfect website before you launch. You want to make sure that you have the perfect packaging for your products before you even buy the products. Guys, we need to figure out how to progress and stop being perfect and to get things going and to do them consistently and to do them good it doesn't have to be great initially great takes time and with the right level of consistency great is guaranteed so the attributes that you need to develop as it pertains to this success secret to financial freedom or financial independence is to stop worrying about being the best at anything in particular focus on starting and improving your skills or your business model and being consistently good no matter what the situation is that you're in most of us think about impressing others at an important moment but that's all about appearance and reputation instead this is what i want you to do focus on continuous and constant improvement and be real and focus on building character as opposed to reputation because reputation is what people think of you character is who you truly are so you need to be good even when nobody's looking stop trying to be perfect when you believe there's an audience now the fourth and final secret to success that i'm gonna share today on this path to you achieving financial freedom is to use rejection as inspiration or motivation I know my rock stars that it hurts to hear no and to get rejected. I've been there. I've been rejected when I had a crush on a guy when I was in college and he didn't want anything to do with me. As a matter of fact, he started to date somebody that was in my circles and it really hurt back then. But you know what? I decided, and this is probably a character flaw of mine, especially when I was younger, because I made it my mission to get myself to a place where he wanted me and couldn't have me. And guess what? I did that. And I did it to the point where he was begging to go out with me because I was achieving success. I was doing all the things that who he was dating wasn't doing, but that's the wrong approach. That's not why I want you to do it. I want you to do it for the right reasons. But I had to share that with you because I don't want you to put me on this pedestal and think that I'm this amazing person over here on YouTube trying to inspire you. I have had to learn many lessons from my own errors in judgment or mistakes and this is one of them. Over the years, I have developed a character that allows me to thrive on rejection and whenever I'm faced with challenges. Listen, my rock stars, if you want me to do something, just tell me it can't be done and you turn me into a monster. Because here's my philosophy. It's only considered to be impossible until it is done. And my favorite quotation is difficult things take long, but impossible things, they take a little longer. And I'll give you an example. At this point in time, my family and I are trying to acquire a piece of property for a passion project that we have that's going to be, you know, it's going to be great for our entire family because everybody in my extended family will have a role in that company and we will be able to work together to pursue a passion that will pay very well and to do so as a unit, as a family on a path to achieving generational wealth. Now, the owner of that property is refusing to sell us that property because you know what? We are coming from poverty. That owner knows our background and they don't think we're good enough to buy the property from them. And I think they have an idea of what we're going to do with it. And I think there's some amount of envy there that's causing them to wanting to sell that property to a complete stranger as opposed to selling it to somebody in the community. But you know what, my rock stars? I have not taken no for an answer in the last 15 years of my life and I'm not going to start now and you shouldn't either. So I have as such identified five creative ways to get this property. 
We can buy it in a company's name so that they don't know who is buying it. I can have my attorney buy it or have a friend buy it and sell it back to us. Or I can wait until the person that they want to sell it to buys it and then goes and make a better offer. So I end up with the property or I can get pretty gangster and wait until people are coming to look at the property to buy it and just meet them halfway and tell them everything bad about the community. Okay, my rock stars, I'm probably not going to do that. But it's an approach. It's an option. But I don't think it's going to get that dire. And no, I would not do that. Okay. Or they're much older. I could just wait them out until they die. And their children is just going to send it because they could care less who owns the property when they're collecting good money for it. Now, I know I just sounded inhumane, but I want you to understand this, my rock stars. A lot of people who achieve success, it's not that they kill their value system or destroy the good in their character. But sometimes you have to play the game that your opponents or those that you're wanting to be in business with or those that are playing politics are willing to play in order for you to get ahead. I can tell you for a fact that if you are not a shrewd business person in this lifetime that we're living in with so much competition and so much innovation, you're not going to achieve financial success. Just make sure that you're not leaving casualties in your part and you're not doing anything that's going to leave a lot of retribution on you or your family or that's going to cause you to not sleep at night. But be shrewd in your approach as you're starting your business, as you're launching your e-commerce platform, as you are operating at work and trying to move up that corporate ladder or for that matter in anything that you are doing. Don't allow people to push you around. Don't allow people to walk over you and never take no for an answer unless that no is going to result in you growing as a person and flourishing as it pertains to your level of success because you know what my rock stars you are going to hear no when you're trying to sell your products or when you're launching your business do not take it personal do not allow it to cause you to act based on your emotions instead of based on logics because that is a complete formula for disaster in business when we start reacting emotionally to things that are happening as opposed to sitting down thinking it through being creative and innovative and figuring out different ways to approach the problems that you're faced with just be logical and figure out how to turn that no into yes my rock stars, I have come to the end of another video. I do hope that you found value in this video and would appreciate you hitting the like if you learned something new. As I said when I started, these steps that I'm going to share or these secrets, they're not the typical safe diplomatic ones that most people talk about. They are a little bit shrewd. They are going to take you possibly outside of your comfort zone. They're going to stop you from being nice, but still remaining true to yourself because that's important. But what I can tell you, my rock stars, as a fact, is that when you embody these character traits as it pertains to achieving success, success is going to be a lot more probable. Until next time, my YouTube family, my rock stars, have a blessed week and walk good.